So through that technique, you remain a tenant on the land as far as the Queensland Government is concerned until such time as they might want your land. And as far as the banks are concerned, they can only claim the money back from you because the government have also claimed the ownership of the land. So when you default on your, on your um, payments, you're still going to owe the money, but you've lost your land. The banks can still chase you for the money. So you're in a great deal of danger up there. Now when we talk about chattels, a chattel is something that can be picked up and sold. That means that they've got a claim over your bank accounts, um, I guess superannuation. Anything that you own in Queensland is now something that the government can claim through the changing of the laws and through the Governor-General's new role. That also means that you no longer have a right of inheritance in Queensland. So that you can make a will and you can leave whatever you've got to your kids, but it's at the will of the government to allow that to happen. Uh, if you've got something they want, it's gone. Um, now, and the Inheritance Act was changed too. Someone sent me a, some details on that not long ago, which I haven't studied completely, but it's there. Now, um, as well as that, under the civil law system that's now in place in Queensland, everyone is now subject to the Uniform Civil Procedures Rules which are in the new Supreme Court Act, which means that everyone is, proven, is guilty until proven innocent. Um, so, and that is happening. There's innumerable numbers of court cases now where people are going along with quite genuine legal processes in hand and they're getting told, no, you've lost it all, your right's gone. So that begs to mind the role of lawyers in Queensland because you can hire a lawyer but your lawyer has an oath to uphold the laws of the country. So your lawyer's going to take your money and you're still going to lose, guys. So you really have to work this one out as far as that goes too because they'll be happy to take your money full well knowing that you won't win the process if it's something that's interfering with the current plans. Now, so you have no civil law up there, you've got the judiciary out of the way. So where do you fit in? Where do the sovereign people of Queensland fit into the structure? That's exactly right in proper terms. But the people aren't recognising that. They aren't sticking up for themselves. They're allowing this to happen through inactivity and fear, which we talked about, and ignorance, exactly. Now, the only reason we discovered this it was because we kept getting this comment. And we had researchers who made it a mission. I mean, one of the major guys, some of these researchers, most of them are farmers. I'll tell you that now. Most of them are farmers. Um, most of them are used to having their land rights removed and have been fighting it for a lot of years. So one of the main guys runs, he's got 10 properties, runs a $30 million enterprise. He's reading court acts while he's driving around on a tractor. And every time he writes something down, he said half the time his plough lines are like this because he's... <laughs> but it's a passion. He's making sure that he doesn't leave his kids nothing because he's worked all his life to do this. And his fam it's his family farm. And the same with the other guys that are involved. Uh, I mean, we, my husband and I are little guys in this. We, we're certainly farmers, but we've only got a little property. Um, but it's still ours, and we fought for it, and we, we won it back from a, another legal battle, and I'll be damned if I'll give it to a government who are going to steal it from me illegally. So, sovereign people, we have all got to start seeing ourselves in the role we've really got. We're all subjects of Her Majesty under section 177 of the Australian Commonwealth. As subjects of Her Majesty, she is committed to helping us. Now, regardless of what you think about the Queen, she has taken on a role, and that role, one of her titles is Regina, and that means she is a regent for, the, for God. She believes that her role is given to her by God, which comes back to what the fellows were talking about yesterday, that our laws and common law is a real reflection of the Ten Commandments, the biblical codes. So regardless of whether you have a belief in God, we have a structure that comes from there, that has benefited us for many, many years. Australia has been one of the most peaceful countries in the world. We've had a structure through the early half of the century where we were actually the most, um, what was the term, the most affluent, not affluent, um, highest standard of living in the world. And it wasn't because we had all these things, it was because we had a stable structure that allowed us to go and work, save our money, buy a house, buy a home, leave it to our kids without worrying about someone stealing it from us. And if they tried, we had a judiciary that stepped in to make sure that we were protected. Since the, probably about the um, 30s, 
It's gradually been getting eroded, little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. And because we've had a stable structure, we've let it happen. And it's, a lot of it's our fault because the minute something goes on, we go, someone should do something about that. We divorce ourselves from the problem. Usually the someone is the government or a council or something, and the councils do this all the time. Someone should do something about that. Oh, we'll step in. Oh, aren't they good guys? We don't have to worry about it now. So we give them that little bit of power. And then something else happens. And often it's created by them to happen too. How many times have you seen a real issue come into the, the media to do with some government thing? All of a sudden some other big thing blows up. The media go crazy about this other thing. And it's, the, the shield is put up to deceive you from following the, the really important thing. It happens all the time. Um, so we, the sovereign people, are the only ones who can do anything about this. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, how do we do it? One of the first things is that when we elect a government, and don't forget we pick these people, when we elect them, too many people sit back and say, that's why I elected them so I didn't have to worry. We elect them so that we should then go on and keep in touch with them and say, you aren't doing what I asked. I asked you to do this. This is why I elected you. I didn't elect you with a mandate to do X, Y, Z. I only elected you with a mandate to listen to me. They've stolen the word mandate from us and they've created as something that says, well, you know, we said we we're going to do this, so you've elected us, so you've given us a mandate. We've only given them a mandate to be in government and listen to us. So we have got to step up to the mark. We've only got two choices in this, and this is why this High Court case is so important, because we've already had some other cases in there. The judges refused to hear them, and this was before we discovered the Queensland Constitution thing. So at first when they refused to hear them, we thought, my God, the High Court are on side with the government. They're telling us we've lost everything. Instead, what they were doing is saying, we can't hear them because you haven't got all the information. Um, so this is why we're coming back to them now with all the information. The High Court are in, once, they've got two choices they can make. They can tell us that we've lost everything and government have got all the rights, or they can tell us that because there was no referendum at any stage for this, no referendum for this, no referendum to change the 1867 constitution, that this doesn't stand and this stands. So that's the situation we're in at the moment, the whole of Australia. We have a total Labor Party control in the whole of Australia. The Labor Party have been complicit in this whole thing from the word go. Certainly the Nationals helped them by laying that bill on the table, but this has been a National Party thing all the way through. And amongst all the, inf thank you. Amongst all the information we found, it has been the National Party in almost all cases that has removed laws. One of the things you can't do as a government, sorry? National? You mean the National Party or the Labor Party? Oh, pardon me, guys, sorry. Um, the Labor Party removed almost all the laws. You can't, with the Constitution, you cannot make an international law because, without the referendum of the people because this doesn't have to recognise international law because it is our power in this country. So things like the Kyoto Treaty, Howard didn't sign that quite rightly because it would have brought an international law over and above the Constitution. He couldn't do it. So the fact that Rudd's gone and signed it straight away is breaking the Constitution. Um, there was something like 1,400 international treaties and things removed when um, the Libs got into power. Now, I'm not saying they're the good guys because they know this has happened. This Governor-General knows this has happened and none of them have spoken out. They all want it because it means that they've got total control. The only people we know that the media will not listen to this, I wrote to over 850 politicians and got not one reply. So we know they aren't interested. It is only the people can take this on. Now the thing is with the people, and this backs up a lot of what's said with multiculturalism, things like that, where is our protection? We've got to understand what we've got. We're being told that this needs reworking. I hope everyone can hear me there. Look at this. This is, this is why we have the country we have. This flag is the backup of our constitution. It carries crosses because our constitution and the flow of our government comes from a godly source. It carries the stars of Australia. The blue represents truth and honesty. The red represents the blood that was on the cross. The white represents purity. This flag is a danger to the government, which is why they want it changed. Because to remove that removes the background of the constitution and our soldiers fought. Remove the constitution, it removes our ownership. There's a huge structure here that's an ongoing thing. 
and it's a great danger to us. And whatever we sit and do nothing, it's going to happen. So what's the suggestion? Um, we speak to people. Now, I've been getting emails from left, right and centre, so is the rest of the legal team. We've been sending things out right, left, right and centre and people are understanding it, people are taking it to their parliamentarian. Most parliamentarians don't. They go, oh no, oh no. Um, but so then if you come away and just let it happen. So please, I guess the only thing I can say is we need to write, not as a group, we need to send a letter to the Governor General and every local member, the guy you voted in or perhaps didn't vote in, you have to be in his ear telling him this is wrong. Um, and that's all we can do. Because the media won't listen, the government won't listen. So we need to make this an effort where we stand our ground for the whole of Australia. Too many people in the other states are going, mm -hmm. but it is happening and it will happen in the other states. Um, we know that in WA the, the Western Australian Government have combined with the Real Estate Institute of WA and the World Wildlife Fund to form the Bush Brokers Company where they're now selling bush land, probably for credits or something like that. But they're now moving into business with our ownership. And community land is ours, don't forget. It's not governments, it's only theirs to look after for us. So they're now moving into selling things that they're for. So this is the structure. We need, I've, I've given you the information. Please take the info, go and study it. Don't just believe me. Just get to, give me your email address. I'll send you all the uh, case notes, etc. But please don't dismiss it because it is happening. And I think the people in Queensland know it's happening. Um, so uh, anything, any information I can help with, uh, any guidelines to what to do, please tell me. We all need to get together and start working on this. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Sue. How informative that was. Look at the queue. <laughs> yes, could I have your question, please, sir? Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. I can support you as New Zealand has got a very similar ah. setup as what you're doing here. And. Um, I, what I wanted to do, the question I wanted to ask is, is how do we get the people to learn to write the right questions because we have stumbled across something that when they go silent or they commercially dishonour you, you can get that memorialised and it has more power than a Supreme Court judgement but you can get the registrar to seal and uh, we cannot give you that just, it's like it's a gun. Yeah. Briefly please. You, yeah, I've nearly finished. And if you want to organise, to get together with people like Mark and myself, that we can show you how to write the letters and get them done. So if you can give that information to the, the board. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Yes, yes your response but please. Thank Is this you like that. a my will letter? Sorry? Are you talking like a my will letter? Uh, no, it, it's basically a, you ask them a series of questions okay. and if they don't answer, the default position is that they are admitting guilt and liability. Thanks very much. We yep. have a long Five queue. Five seconds. No, we please. have a long queue, really. And then you give them two notices, memorialise it. Next speaker, please. Your question. What, what has been the reaction from the Queensland Premiers and the Queensland Members of Parliament when you brought this information that you discovered to their attention? What response did you get from them? Absolutely nothing. Um, I, I received absolutely no answers. Other people have gone to their local members, to other parliamentarians. They've received, say, form letters. Now, I'm, I'm obviously not in Queensland, so they can ignore me. Um, but other local members have received form letters. Some of the people that were running for election were aware of this and they were trying to bring it up, but they didn't get in. There was not many independents. The one thing that I did neglect to say is that through courtesy of this structure, Queensland is actually no longer part of Australia because you don't follow the Constitution. So Kevin Rudd stood as a member of a state who no longer rec recognises the Australian Constitution. So this went to the, the Governor-General and the question was, can this man even run? And even the Governor-General never replied to anyone on that and that went out several times. So the short answer is no, no one's replied. Thank you. Your question please. 